Ah, uh, this visual novel is boring. I don't even live in Tokyo wherever this takes place. Why should I be engaged in fiction I don't find relatable? I'm shutting this off. Hmm. <laughs> I still crave playing a visual novel, but I'd like it to be more topical to me. Something more in line of the American culture. Huh? This visual novel looks interesting. It's about a middle-class white girl going to a United States Midwestern high school. It's proclaiming to be a rejection sim? I wonder what that means. And apparently the game's name is... If you have not played this game, you are missing out. It defines itself as an accurate representation of the late 2000s American high school culture, and it is of course satirical in this definition. This game takes jabs at many different things, including but not limited to, I'm gonna not say this part. This game does not pull punches when going over the top of this admittedly really dark comedy. Like gender, age is just another thing on your driver's license. Um, how do you feel about that, Nicole? Do you have an I feel statement? I feel like he wants to fuck children. And yes, you've just heard it correctly. It's voice acted. The whole game is. And I've got to say, the voice acting is very well done. Especially the voice actors for the female characters. They did an excellent job capturing that not a sound racist, kind of Cali basic white girl accent. So you guys want to buy some Addies? Are you serious? I told you the other bathroom's better. Are you guys here to buy Adderall? No, we're just getting out of a quiz. Then get the hell out. Tell that to the yeah, other girls. They don't have a quiz to spend. We were here we're first. All yeah, here. and you guys probably won't even buy Addie. The voice actor for the main character named Nicole, we'll get to her, is Elsie Lovelock. The same voice actor did the singing voice for the main character in that very homosexual web series. And what can you do, my effeminate fellow? I can suck your dick. And also an AVGN episode? What? Can someone tell me what episode that is? The other, I guess you could call her a main character, is Jekka, voiced by Kelly Mills. The same person who did all of these animes, so yeah. If you've watched any of these, you might recognize her voice. Everyone who voice acted for this game did an excellent job reading the absolutely deranged and unhinged script written by Sobro03. This man is literally fucking insane. Look at the game for the sequel of Class of 09. What the fuck is this game? Do you play video games to do conformist bitch shit like saving the world? Or are you a true Sigma who plays Class of 09 the re-up? Actually unhinged. This video game is entirely based on real events, encounters, and personalities. Yeah, and I have a million subscribers, buddy. For this episode of Psychoanalysis, I'm going to be ranking the characters of Class of 09 in a tier list based on how fixable and treatable they are. The top being not needed fixing. I won't be going as in depth with the other characters since they don't really get that much screen time compared to Nicole and Jekka. Of course if I get anything wrong, or if you feel you disagree on something, you know the deal. Write that 5 page essay on why I'm wrong in the comment section down below. And remember, I'm not certified, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. Let's talk about this true-blooded, real patriotic American school real quick. The name of the game, Class of 09, refers to the year you're expected to graduate when you enter high school. The game takes place from 2008 to 2009, so you get to see them graduate, if you pick the right path. Most of the game takes place in this high school. Speaking of which, this school is really fucked up. There's drug dealings in the school, a lot of drugs actually, notably Adderall and Percocets. Half of the teachers are pedophiles, technically a pubophile since they are attracted to the late adolescents which the students of 09 are. Pedophilia refers to the attraction of prepubescent children, and I'm pretty sure students are not prepubescent. But stating that specification makes it sound like you're playing a nerdy devil's advocate, so I'm just gonna keep referring to them as pedophiles. This game is often over the top in its representation of a typical American high school of course, but satire is built upon reality. All the way back on November 1st, I posted a Class of 09 video I recorded and video edited in July. Just a throwaway video for the sake of it. And then to my surprise got tens of thousands of views. But the most important takeaway I got from posting that video is the comments. This game is not for teens, yet this is how teens always acted like. I tell ya, they are more involved into sex and drugs than any adult. Of course, not all of them, but I do remember elementary and high school, and this is how they've always been like. High school, probably, but I don't think elementary kids are doing Adderall and others as a drug and engaging in intercourse often, laughing my ass off. That's crack, I've got some news for you, bub. And there are a lot of comments after that about how people's high school experiences were just as bad as depicted in Class of 09, which led me to thinking, was high school actually like this? The usage of Adderall in Class of 09 is fairly accurate. It is assumed that characters who take Adderall as a drug do it to fulfill their addiction to it. 
But why in the world would they have been taking it in the first place? Well, I'm going to be presumptuous and assume they did it to fit in socially. If the cool girls are taken Addies, as they are nicknamed by everyone, then you would take it too to seem more relatable to them. In reality, Adderall usage among academic students is high too, generally not taken for anxiolysis, but instead to enhance her focus and attentiveness to improve their studying slash work ability. Data shows in academic institutions, females outweigh males in Adderall consumption. This is likely due to the fact a side effect of Adderall is a loss of appetite, which in addition to the supposed benefits of improved studying capability, makes this a very appealing option for women wanting to get thin while studying under liberal arts. So I guess that could be another reason these girls in class of 09 could be taken at ease since they are self-conscious of their weight, due to the fact these girls absolutely value their looks. I gotta go to math now. Math class? You doing good at math? A for the year? A plus, actually. Is the plus for plus size? Yeah, if you're so good at math, why can't you count your calories? Is this really necessary? Is that extra cheese at Chipotle necessary? The other popular drug in his school is Perks, aka Percocets. It's a tablet which contains oxycodone, the analgesic, pain reliever, and acetaminophen, an antipyretic, anti-fever. The important part of the drug is of course the oxycodone, since these kids get a pretty good sensory relief hit. Percocets is a very addictive drug, obviously, so it's clear these students have most likely developed a dependence to opioids. And on the topic of the rowdiness of teenagers, it is true with the effects of post-puberty, a sex drive is included into the package. Teenagers typically of these newfound feelings generally are confused with how to handle these emotions and urges, which is why schools have instituted sex education courses to help inform teenagers about sex and other venereal topics. Of course, it's not going to stop teenagers from wanting to have sex, but generally it's in the hope to reduce accidental teen pregnancy, and also to help identify sexual abuse slash assault, I guess. But this school clearly has a problem with its ongoing continuous promiscuous activities among the students, teachers, and students with teachers. Indeed, it's safe to assume this is not a safe environment, and it's also fair to pin the blame of all of this promiscuity in the high school on the principal since she herself has admitted to When you fooled around with half your staff, they don't take you very seriously. I know I might seem old to you, but we're actually not too different. Using our looks to fuck around with people? That's right been doing it since I was your age. I'd say the students acting inappropriately are due to lack of education on sexual boundaries and appropriateness, and a lack of disciplinary action could be a factor as well. Plus, the teachers acting inappropriately around or onto students certainly isn't helping matters. So, the world of Class of 09 is wacky and crazy, therefore judging these characters' psyche will be a little difficult with all the different paths the story can go, but I'm going to try my best to assess them all in a fair light while considering all the actions they've committed in the variant timelines. Jeffrey is surprisingly, compared to the rest of the male characters, kind of normal. His behavior towards others isn't inherently negative, he tries his best to be positive even if he has his slip-ups. Like, okay, he thinks your Chinese cartoon books are stupid, why defend it? Stay out of this, you... you girl! But that could be construed to his lack of social skills due to being a weeb. A weeb being someone who is obsessed with Japanese culture, most importantly, its media. This leads to socially awkward situations, but honestly, I don't think Jeffrey is malicious at all. In the timeline where he literally shot up the school, you can make a very fair argument he was pushed into going over the edge in this situation. Except for that time he took a photo of Nicole in the girls' locker room, that was actually deranged. I'd like to give him the benefit of the doubt and say it's for revenge, stating he wants to get back into Cole for her bullying him, but he also says this. I've captured your succulent figure on medium format film. Every little shadow and highlight of your tantalizing mid Drift captured the way it was meant to be. If you're gonna sexually harass me, could you not talk like a cartoon character while you do it? I do what I want with my words. I'll also do as I please with this photo. So I don't know what to think of him in this timeline. I would have put him at barely need and fixing, but this timeline has put him down in need and fixing. Crispin is a normal kid. He doesn't make conversations weird or inappropriate. He's still awkward when it comes to social interaction, but he, at least unlike Jeffrey, doesn't derail it too far to creepiness. He just wants to talk about DLC and video games for goodness sake. It, it's not even like games, it's, it's just apps. Like there's an app for this, there's an app for that. Is there an app that'll make you fuck off and kill yourself? Um. Is that like a choke, or are we- Just go! <laughs> uh, you guys are crazy. He generally has a down-to-earth personality, but there's a caveat though. In a timeline, he sent an unsolicited dick pic to Nicole, but I believe he didn't do this knowing it would be inappropriate and possibly traumatizing to Nicole. He most likely just doesn't understand personal boundaries, which can be attributed to the school environment, and it not enforcing curriculums that teach the correct social boundaries. If perhaps the school wasn't filled with sexual harassers, he wouldn't have been in a situation to send an unsolicited pic. 
Overall, he barely needs fixing. Put him in a better environment, a more fit sim, and teach him social boundaries, please. Kyler is fucked up. He's a stereotypical high school bully, and he might possibly be misogynist. What's up, you whores? Alright, whores, fuck you then. What's your problem? You fucking whore, shut up! Although that is just speculation, as he could just be acting that way to seem cooler compared to other male jock students in the school. Students see as narcophilia or somnophilia, which is the attraction to an individual who is asleep or unconscious. But they state this off of one example back in his freshman year. I'm not trying to let him off the hook of course, that's fucked up and he should have faced serious backlash for that. Which you can assume he hasn't because again, this school is unbelievably unreprimanded towards heinous acts, especially those of a promiscuous nature. But doing a singular act once is not equated to being a consistent pattern of behavior. What I will say is consistent behavior from Kyler is his violent outbursts with little initiation required. You are a quintessential dipshit. Quinn, uh, I don't know what the fuck that means, but I'm gonna kick your ass. You gonna hit a girl? What the fuck is wrong with you? Think I care? You don't know me? I beat the shit out of my mom if she was asking for it. Overall, I'd give him really neat and fix it. He has a lot to go with behavioral therapy if he wants to better control himself and his violent tendencies. Karen is normal. She just focuses on her academics, that's never taking drug usage around campus at least, and generally is on good behavior. And unlike Jeffrey, isn't inappropriate. Unfortunately, staying disciplined doesn't leave you on good terms with messed up students. She might have an eating disorder, but honestly, compared to the rest of the characters in this game, that's nothing. So she doesn't need fixing. Megan is normal, I guess. She's a bit bossy, but again, compared to the rest of the school, she's fine too. Don't have much to say other than she might have a bit of an ego and also is a bit controlling. Doesn't need fixing. Hunter? I feel just a guy going along with the flow. Sometimes too along with the flow. He did send dick pics and cheat on his girlfriend, but that is definitely a result from him being manipulated. Keep Hunter away from manipulative people, because at least as presented in this time frame, he can't really really think for himself all that well. I'd say doesn't need fixing. All he needs to learn is how to identify malicious interactions and how to avoid them. I'm not going to go in depth with the counselor and coach. What do you want me to say about them? They groom and molest underages. They need jail time. I'll say though, the counselor takes a more civilized approach to being a pedophile compared to the coach. Ari, dependent on the storyline, is either a closeted homosexual or an outgoing one. She's a regular acting student who does the occasional skip in class or work and making up excuses for a shtick, and possibly occasionally partakes in drug consumption, but an underlying trait of hers that may lead to some trouble down the road, especially clear on a certain path of the story, is her masochistic trait. Someone who's a masochist gains sexual satisfaction from being harmed or humiliated, maybe not by everyone, but perhaps by people they're close to. This is not a good trait to be exhibited in, especially when she is attracted to someone like Nick Cool. She also stated she cuts herself, so uh, in the real lesbianism route, she realizes after having a talk with the counselor that the continuous abuse she sustains from being in a relationship with Nicole is very unhealthy. She breaks up with Nicole and then has the greatest fucking epiphany of all time. I realize that guys turn me off, but girls make me want to fucking kill myself. Let's go! So I'd say she's been slightly fixed during the story, but she still needs fixing. Emily has bipolar disorder. More specifically, bipolar 1 disorder. I'm not so sure about schizophrenia, but it's stated she takes prescribed Seroquel, aka quetiapine, for bipolar disorder or schizophrenia or both. In the timeline where Nicole befriends Emily, Emily decides to stop taking her Seroquel and use it instead to try and commit to a suicide pact with Nicole in the fit of mania, which she actually does commit to and dies. Her bipolar disorder makes her very liable to mental instability, even when she's taking medication, and she has tendencies to exhibit violent outbursts. But other than the befriend timeline though, Emily is normal-ish. She needs constant surveillance and therapy. The rest of the characters, I won't be covering as they really aren't that prominent or will become relevant as I started to talk about. Jekka aka Jessica is a girl who's just along for the ride most of the time when it comes to hijinks with Nicole. She understands when Nicole's going too far, often pointing out her sociopathic behavior. This doesn't mean she wouldn't do similar actions, but she at least doesn't want it actually truly hard harming others, which is a moral code Nicole does not abide by. Jekka's too cool for everyone personality, which she pulls off well, attracted Nicole to her. As Nicole is a narcissist, she'd like to be at the top of the school status hierarchy. A narcissist is someone who has an uncontrollable desire for status, power, and also has a heightened sense of self-importance, aka a large ego. Nicole is also manipulative, lacking empathy towards those she manipulates for her own personal gain. The game is very adamant about Nicole being a sociopath, literally labeling the game as a sociopath simulator. And it's clear why they focus so much on telling you that. Whenever she's called out for doing something really immoral, she chalks it up to having a terrible childhood, which she did have with her father having killed himself and blaming it on Nicole. Whether it was actually Nicole's fault, we'll never know. Her mother constantly having to move the household due to her inability to keep a husband for more than two weeks, and also her mother for being abusive at times, especially in the second game. She was actually quite supportive in the first game. She must have gotten a character rewrite in a sequel. Nicole 
Michael is also, and this is going to be maybe controversial, but also kind of obvious, a hardcore misandrist, which means someone who dislikes men. And you can tell she is definitely misandrist. She will automatically assume all men are out to sexually harass her and devolve all men in her mind to people she can manipulate, often by promiscuous means. Her goals are purely materialistic. She has, in most routes, no desire to build any relationship with anyone. No goals for finding the partner she could be with. Her only motivation in life, as it appears to be, is to take drugs and feel good putting others down to seem superior, and is constantly on the brink of literally ended it all. Jekka isn't really that suicidal and not that manipulative compared to Nicole. Jekka is definitely still liable and at fault for immoral and harmful actions she commits, but she at least tries to shy away from purposely doing them just for the sake of doing them. Jekka should still be reprimanded for the things she does, but unlike Nicole, I believe Jekka actually has a chance of redemption. She really needs to cut Nicole out of her life and start focusing more on her academics and building relationships with people who don't admit to eating cold pizza. What the fuck? Do you seriously eat pizza cold? Yeah, what's wrong with that? Now I know you're out of your fucking mind. Hot pizza is just grease. There's grease in cold pizza. It's just solidified, schizo. Many times, Nicole gets called out for her behavior, especially by her mother in the first game. This best reveals her psyche as it's almost like therapy, where Nicole is honest about her feelings and emotions. The choices you make in the game, I'd say, mirror exactly what Nicole's thought processes were and how she words her decisions. Jekka goes into need and fix it. Honestly, not that bad compared to Emily or Kyler. In a timeline where Nicole graduates, she has a conversation with the principal, Miss Lynn, where Nicole discovers Lynn slept with half of the male teachers in the school to maintain her reputation, with Lynn stating Nicole to be similar to her. Nicole comes to the conclusion that women who are attractive usually find things easier to achieve, and how they don't even have to try to earn, often off of the labor of others. In a secret scene, Jeffrey and Nicole actually have a really insightful, for us anyway, debate on whether or not Nicole and Jekka are socially spoiled, as he says, saying Nicole and Jekka aren't appreciative of all the compliments and nice treatment they get and how they don't reciprocate those back, or how they just attack those who do, with Nicole's and I guess Jekka's argument being the nice treatment they get is from obsession and for malicious reasons, because they're both attractive females. Jeffrey then says that he'd rather be socially spoiled than socially alone. He then banter more before leaving. The class of 09 is a comedy, so everything I've just said could be deconstructed by the fact that it's a comedy and it's not that serious bro, just laugh at the funny anime girl bully kids and manipulate men. And I agree, it's not that serious. And also, Class of 09 has a Kickstarter where they're planning on making an anime episode, which will be so banger. It will absolutely clear Has Been Hotel and Lack of Daisy in a digital circus clown show. If you like Class of 09, you should give like a dollar to the Kickstarter. Also, Sobro No 3 will literally find you and beat you up until you donate. Oh, oh I'll get him. <laughs> You'll get him. That's I'll your threat. Him. Oh, I'll get you. <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> First thing we do in the Class of 09 voice chat it's it's a pretty active voice chat for for like a random game discord server and what i'll say is that uh every time somebody gets in the chat they're immediately interrogated did you buy the games and uh what is it it's did you buy the games and did you back the kickstarter and if they don't do those things then they're called fake fan and everybody yells at them that, that's just how the community is conditioned now that fucking rocks <laughs> Like I said, he's actually deranged. If you like this video and want to see less like it, then check out my psychoanalysis on the coffin of Andy and Lele. I never expected that video to blow up the way it did, so yeah, check that out. Oh, and I also put Nicole in her own little tear. The trash! Nah. Bro, what other, like, I'm not even saying visual novels. Like, dude, you can't, like, like do a bunch of Percocet in Baldur's Gate. Like, I'm sorry. That's, like, it's just not as, it's not the same to me.